There is a fast spreading new sub variant of the coronavirus that's raising concerns among health officials around the world. The CDC says the EG5 variant, otherwise known as ARIS, now makes up the largest portion of new COVID-19 infections nationwide. The agency protects the variant caused approximately 17% of new coronavirus cases in the U.S. as of Saturday. That's an increase of around 10% from the first week of July. Mm. So for more on this, we want to bring in Dr. Bob Lahida. He's the director of the Institute for Autoimmune and Rheumatic Diseases at St. Joseph Health. And he's also the author of Immunity Strong. And also, we always have him on Fridays. So I know it's a good day when I see Dr. Bob. But what's going on, Dr. Bob? We've got coronavirus going around again. Tell us more about this EG5 variant. Well, it's a it's a strain of the variant, the Omicron variant. This is a strain, and these strains arrive as Anne Marie, as you know, we talked about upregulation and downregulation of the virus. And fortunately, most of the population has immunity, adaptive immunity to this virus, which means their immune systems, our immune systems, recognize the Omicron. And the Omicron fortunately has been mild, except that. 43% increase in hospital admissions over July, which is of some concern. And secondly, we have wastewater. Remember, we, we look for the virus in wastewater. Right. And in wastewater, the numbers have increased. And if you talk to the pharmacies like uh, Rite Aid, they're seeing more self-testing being sold. Over 50% of their pharmacies are seeing an increase in self-test kits going out. So all of that is an indication that things are beginning to heat up again. Okay, so Dr. Bob, let me ask you this. If you're someone who's been vaccinated, I have. If you're someone who's been infected, I have. Are you going to have an easier time dealing with this new variant if you get it? And can I just add a B part to you? If, if your infection was the Omicron uh, variant, does that also help? That does help. You have immunity, uh, David, and so do you, Anne Marie. In fact, we all do because we've, most of us, and I say the great population of the country has had at least one vaccination. Many, many people have had the boosters, but let's not relax because elderly people and those who are immunocompromised can still get the Omicron, which can wreak havoc on their immune systems. It all depends on our own immunity. Everybody's immune system, like their fingerprints, is different. So you have to understand that your neighbor may be very, very ill from the Omicron variant, especially the EG5, and you may have no symptoms whatsoever. But the other thing to remember is if you do get the Omicron, you can still get long haul syndrome, which you remember is fatigue, brain fog, loss of taste, loss of smell. Some of my patients have paralysis over a, an extended period of time of their arms or their legs. So this is serious stuff. Um, so the World Health Organization labeled this new variant, EG5, a variant of interest. What does that labeling sort of really mean in real life? It means it's being watched. It's not a variant of concern. There's always a possibility, especially with us clustering in air conditioned rooms during the summer because of the heat, there's always that possibility that a new variant, which is deadly, will arise. Now you remember, we all remember the Delta variant back in 2020, which wreaked havoc and our emergency rooms couldn't handle, and the ICUs couldn't handle the numbers of patients. That's always a possibility going forward, but I doubt it's going to happen only because all of us have herd immunity, plus we've all been vaccinated for the most part. So Dr. Bob, you talk about herd immunity. It's a great segue to my next question. Is your warning to us today along the lines of a warning we would do as we get into flu, right? Is this sort of the common flu, the common COVID, nothing to panic over, something to keep in mind as we move forward? It's something to keep in mind because, you know, as fall comes into the country, autumn, we get the common cold, which is also a coronavirus, not to be confused with COVID, but we've got to be careful. And I presume that's why the kit sales 
the self-testing kits are increasing in number because people are concerned. I know here in our clinics, when somebody comes in with a slight fever and sniffles, which could be a common cold, we get very nervous. Everybody puts on a mask. We start washing our hands and we prohibit the patient from any contact with any other patients. So we've got to have that extra note of caution because it's not like it was in 2018 where everybody got a cold and nobody worried about anything. Right now, nobody's wearing masks that I can see. Uh, people are hoarding together in gatherings, parties, all sorts of things. So yes, we have to be careful. Again, it's not of concern, but it's uh, it's to be observed and watched. Okay. So I'm going to, I have a confession. I got booster fatigue. I got three boosters, then I ended up getting the coronavirus. And I figure that's like four times the exposure. Did you have a mild experience once you got it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm definitely, I look, I'm, okay. I'm pro, I'm, I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. into it. Yeah. But now we're hearing about pos the possibility of new vaccines, right? And we were kind of told that, you know, the protocol may be in the future something like a flu vaccine where you got to get it, you know, every season. Yeah. So apparently there are new vaccines that should be available this fall season. Um, what can you tell us about, you know, what to expect, what the developments might be, if there are any new developments? Well, I know there are vaccines in development against the ARIN or EG5 variant of the Omicron strain. And uh, that is going to come forward. And all of the nursing home people, all of the professionals that work in hospitals, police officers, EMS people, we will all be vaccinated with a booster that includes the EG5 variant. Mm. Now, that's just a precautionary thing because the likelihood of it causing a wreaking havoc as it did back in, again, 2020, 2019, is not likely. However, it is better to be prepared than to be sorry, because you know how fast this infection went through the population back in those days. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Dr. Bob, thank you. This was a good chat. Thanks, David. Thanks, Anne-Marie.